Today on Earth Focus, toxic chemicals in cosmetics and what consumers need to know. Mia Davis of The Beauty Counter speaks out. Coming up on Earth Focus. Cosmetics are among the least regulated consumer products on the market. We really talk about it being the wild west out there when it comes to personal care products because right now companies are allowed to use virtually any ingredient that they want in a cosmetic product and put it on the market without any safety assessment pre-market. So when we talk about cosmetics, we really mean basically anything that you would put on your body. Uh, shampoo, conditioner, face wash, makeup, cologne, aftershave, even baby bubble bath and baby products are in the cosmetics industry. There are about 12,000 chemicals that are used in the cosmetic industry, and there are approximately 80% that have never been assessed for safety. So they've never been looked at for health endpoints like cancer, reproductive harm, infertility. So we simply don't know what they do. Now, it doesn't mean that they're harmful, but the absence of data does not mean that they're safe either. Uh, for the other percentage of chemicals that we do have data on, some of them are known carcinogens. For example, formaldehyde is allowed in baby products. It's allowed as a preservative in a lot of personal care products. This is an issue that affects everyone, including men, including children. On average, women are using the most personal care products because there's more makeup use. Women are using about 10 to 12 products a day, which may seem like a lot, but when you add up your shampoo and conditioner, your makeup, your face lotion, it does add up quickly. Uh, kids are using about six products a day, and so are men. We know that there are endocrine disruptors, like phthalates, that are used in fragrances. Um, so this ranges not only from cologne uh, and perfume, but fragrances that are used in lotions, even in baby products, and in products that women of childbearing age are using all over their bodies while they might be pregnant. Some of these chemicals we know can cross the placenta and enter the womb and have effects at incredibly tiny, tiny doses. So it's a major health concern for the entire population. The FDA is the federal agency that's in charge of regulating the cosmetic industry, and the law that actually governs the cosmetic industry is from 1938, so it's very outdated, and it's pretty toothless. The FDA, under this law, the FDA can't even do a recall of a cosmetic product that is known to be unsafe, and they certainly can't require that companies submit any safety data about the ingredients that they're using in products before we're slathering them all over our skin and putting them on our children. The law from 1938 has several loopholes in it that allow companies to basically use um, myriad chemicals without disclosing them on ingredient labels under the term fragrance. So when you see fragrance on your shampoo or your lotion, a lot of folks might think that that's one or two essential oils, maybe a couple of other chemicals. It can be dozens or even hundreds of chemicals, some of them synthetic, some of them known endocrine disruptors like phthalates or um, synthetic musks. Chemicals also might be hiding as contaminants. So this is the case with lead and lipstick. Uh, when I was at the Campaign for Safe Cosmetics, we tested several very popular lipsticks on the US market and found that many of them did indeed contain lead at levels that were higher than the FDA's limit for lead in candy. The FDA has no limit for lead in lipstick. Now, is the consumer going to see lead on her lipstick ingredient label? Of course not, because it's just tagging along as a contaminant with other metals or colorants. And another way that cosmetic ingredients can be hiding on ingredient labels is preservatives. So a cosmetic manufacturer can buy a bulk ingredient, let's use the example of aloe, and that aloe could be pre-preserved with parabens or other preservatives, and the cosmetic manufacturer never has to tell the consumer what that preservative is, so in fact, a product that might be marketed as paraben-free could even have parabens hiding in the other raw uh, ingredients, which is not only a health concern, but it's a consumer right to know concern. And consumers are often going out of their way to purchase products that they believe are better for their health by having free of statements, free of certain chemicals. And we're finding that that might not be the case. Consumers shouldn't have to have a PhD in toxicology to decipher their cosmetic ingredient labels or any other ingredient labels for that matter. Uh, right now, I think the consumer is really at a loss to know what these chemicals are doing to their bodies, to the environment, to the health of their children. Um, and 
you know, it should never have to be this way. We should be making sure that chemicals are assessed for safety before they're put into these products in the first place. Airwaves, a global channel of uncompromising stories. World news, documentaries, entertainment, and culture. Link TV, connecting you to the world. For more information, visit linktv.org.